Reincarnated as a sword is enlightenable about a guy that gets reborn as a sword in a fantasy world. He meets a caddy or lolly slave and decides to become a father figure for her. They then go on adventures together, uncovering mysteries, finding answers, and getting stronger along the way. This one was surprising. No, it's not secretly a literary masterpiece. For all intents and purposes, this is probably one of the most basic isekai stories I've read. Like, they go to a town, they meet some thugs, they beat them up, people find out their true strength, they get info from someone, they go on a quest, they meet someone else, that person sends them off on another quest, they find a big bad thing to beat by the end of the volume, they get stronger, rinse, and repeat. Nothing too impressive at all. The villains are cartoonishly evil and they most definitely will lose eventually, so there's very little to no tension. The first volume is also just bloated with a never-ending stream of gaming terms and stats, so that doesn't help. I mean, we don't even meet the cat girl until almost halfway through the book. But of course, if I'm writing about it, it's because I liked it. So, what's good about the series? Well, the characters. I mean, come on, a sword dad and his adoptive cat girl daughter going on a fantasy quest? Do you really think that's not gonna be a whole lot of fun? Regardless of how basic the story is, just watching them travel and fight extremely cliched thugs and care and trust for each other, man, it's great. They also get a huge pet of wolf later on and he gets like steel claws and shit and the cat girl and the wolf love to eat curry. It's awesome. But no, yeah. <laughs> when I said at the beginning that this one was surprising, I meant that I was not expecting to like the characters as much as I did. They're all really basic, but in a really good way that also makes them extremely likable. For example, Fran the cat girl. What's her personality? Well, she's expressionless because she was a slave. What are her motivations? Kill slave traders because they enslave her tribe, the black cats a lot, and also evolve to improve her tribe's reputation again because the other tribes have put them at the bottom of the social ladder. What makes her mad? Slave traders and people that insult her tribe. What does she like? Food and her friends. What about Teacher, the talking sword? What's his motivation? Helping Fran. What does he like? Fran, their pet wolf, and people that are nice to them. <laughs> See, it's really basic, but that's good enough for me. Fran just wants to kill slave traders and people that insult her tribe and also get stronger and eat a lot, and Teacher just wants to help her do all that. It's the perfect duo. This is labeled as an isekai, but really the cliches kinda aren't there. This reads a whole lot like a regular fantasy story. The girl who used to be a slave forming a familial bond with a sentient sword that helps her achieve her dreams. The dude who's reincarnated into the sword barely brings up Earth at all, except to talk about how pumped up he is to see fantasy cliches play out in real time. No, his true role is actually just the talking swords you might think of in other stories, just a weapon that really cares for their wielder and is there to help them grow and talk to them when they have no one to talk to. Teacher and friend do fight together fairly often, but most of the time the crucial decisions that will decide how the plot progresses are left to friend and not him. So really, it's barely an isekai at all aside from the getting strong very quick part and even that isn't entirely like an isekai because multiple times throughout multiple volumes Fran and Teacher run into people that are way stronger than them some friendly and some not so friendly I'd say not unlike something like Dan Machi this is actually just a shonen action manga disguised as an isekai light novel except the focus is less in the fights and more in the journey and the encounters and fights or characters have throughout said journey it's similar in tone to those shonen adventure manga that used to be really popular where the protagonist would set out with a particular very simple goal in mind, but would take a lot of detours that would result in them making more allies and enemies. That shonen adventure manga example is good too, because I think the way the characters are written is fairly similar to those as well. Simple but good motivations that immediately make the protagonist likable, basic but memorable character traits assigned to almost every character, and a balance of easy fights to get that power fantasy going, and intense fights to watch your characters grow throughout each volume. Alright, we've talked about how it's fun, but is it worth catching up on? Is it worth reading? Because I mean, the light novel is at 11 volumes right now. Well, I think that comes down to how much you enjoyed the characters, because the setup is never all that attention grabbing at all. It's usually, alright, now we gotta go to this town to do this thing. There is a reason for why the setup is so basic though, and that is that the way each new quest develops is that Fran and Teacher always almost immediately deviate from their original goal. Like, the next step in their journey is literally just go to town A, and then along the way they end up trying to fly into a floating island dungeon filled with skeleton dragons. In conclusion, Sir That Easy Guy is uh, a lot of fun. It won't change your life, nor shatter and rebuild your soul over and over, but it will entertain you for a couple hours, and that's good enough for me. I recommend this if you love those very standard adventure stories that consist of getting strong, meeting allies, and fighting the forces of evil. I would also recommend this if you want a good found family story. Teacher and Fran's father and daughter relationship is super heartwarming, and one of the best parts of the series is watching Fran meet more people she cares for. Would not recommend if you want anything that deviates at all from standard fantasy cliches, because this follows all of them, word for word. Recommend that if you always had a subconscious desire to be a cool talking weapon that gave wise advice.